aspect of electricity supply which involves potentially dangerous network faults. <clears throat> I should first declare an interest that's probably the most out-of-date chartered engineer in Parliament, having been here full-time for 49 years and a fellow of the Institution of Engineering and Technology. I still pay my subs after more than 60 years yeah, yeah, yeah. and skim the technical journals. In April, I read in Engineering and Technology about the concerns relating to the risks of neutral current diversion, <coughs> known as NCD. The author was an investigative journalist, Conor McLeod. <coughs> McLeod wrote of experts expressing concerns of the real risk of deadly gas explosions and fires in the UK due to a common fault on the electrical system. They claim the fault is neither acknowledged by distribution network operators or the health and safety executive. My lords, in short, and keeping off the detailed techie stuff, a neutral current diversion can occur when the combined protective earthing and neutral conductor fails. The current is then diverted by making a circuit by exposed metal workings on buildings, including gas, water and oil pipes. In other words, electricity can flow through gas meters in these circumstances. NCDs are causing gas explosions. Gas meters are not designed to carry electricity. And if a current is diverted, creating heat due to the high resistance, an explosion can follow. The fault is such that engineers, when changing gas meters, attach jump leads between pipes because neutral current diversions are so prevalent and sparks can be created. After an explosion, of which there have been more in recent years, we're simply told possible gas leak. In fact, a house in the King's Standing part of my former constituency disappeared in such an explosion last year. One example given my globe by Conor McGloan was when Gordon McKenzie, formerly of SP Energy Networks, became aware of a resident's coat falling on a gas meter and the coat caught fire. He detected a 35 amp current flowing through the metallic gas service pipe entering the property, affecting 72 houses. There was nothing whatsoever to indicate a problem. No flickering lights, nothing. Neutral current diversions are not routinely considered after an explosion. I therefore tabled, having read this, uh, some written questions answered by Viscount Younger of Leckie on the 2nd of May. I was informed no additional action is required by the regulator, health and safety executive, to manage the risk of NCDs at the present time. <coughs> we'll keep it under review. Now, these can cause fires in ordinary domestic appliances due to the high resistance. Voltage surges occur in properties without a gas supply. As a result of the Ansard reports of those written answers, I was contacted about the wider problem of safety checks and weaknesses in electrical regulation. I'm informed the charity Electri Electrical Safety First and the certification giant Bureau Veritas have both expressed more concern than the health and safety executive whose approach has been described as, quote, nothing to see, move on, unquote. My attention was then drawn to the Grenfell Tower Inquiry website. Nobody knows how the fire in the flat started and indeed the inquiry is not looking into this. The contractor, Ride and Maintenance, which subcontracted work to RJ Electrics Limited to carry out electrical tests, appear to believe the inquiry is examining the cause of the fire. That's the excuse for not answering questions about the electrical safety checks. 
Now, the interesting thing here, which is very uh, unusual, is the inquiry website is publicly available and it contains the electrical installation work certificates relating to flats in Grenfell Tower. An analysis of the certification of the fixed wiring installations show inconsistencies, dangerous oversights, and a failure to comply with the IET wiring regulations, British Standard 7671. These certificates show proper testing was not taking place. Indeed, there was a substandard level of testing of the hard wiring. Now, unlike gas engineers, who are named in sp as specific competent people, in electrical testing, the system is such that an employee who may or may not be an electrician conducts the testing and a competent body scheme supply at a cost a qualified supervisor meant to ensure the employee is competent and supervised for the work they undertake. Now, the, there are more than one competent body, but the competent bodies regarding Grenfell is the well-known NIC EIC. We see it on all the vans. I will not list all the examples, but give a flavour of the list. I have read all the certificates relating to Grenfell, which have the NIC EIC logo and are all serial numbered. The figures that follow have been assessed by experts. The certificates show that 38 of 120 flats had electrical installations put into service without residual circuit breaker testing. This is crucial to protect equipment from shorting and may be causing a fire. Nine flats had installations put into service with known deficiencies declared on the certificates. There are 13 certificates which do not have the date that the qualified supervisors signed off the work of the tester. For the majority of certificates, the dates between the tester doing the work and the qualified supervisor reviewing the work is more than 25 days. There are 10 minor electrical work installation certificates for six different flats recorded as completed on the same day in August 2015 by the same person. Experts tell me it's highly unlikely the testing was done correctly. And I'm deliberately avoiding referring specifically to any numbered flats because the certificates contain obviously the numbers of all the flats because I don't want to uh, be confused about the flat where the, the, the fire actually started. It's the result of all the testing. So the, the experts say that it's quite clear the testing wasn't done correctly. This is a result of a race to the bottom during a price war started by the introduction of the electrical safety standards in the private rented sector. The scheme, which appears not fit for purpose, is about to cover the social rented sector. The scheme is clearly open to price cutting abuse and incompetence and should be remodelled to the same standards as gas testing. After I looked at the comments from other engineers, it crossed my mind to ask about all the residential tower blocks where cladding needs to be replaced. I asked via written questions about electrical safety checks, records of voltage surges, the potential for improving the system in these tower blocks where tens of thousands of families, the figure I've seen is 660,000 people, are living with similar external cladding to Grenfell and if the testing regime could be changed. The answer from the noble Baroness Scott a boycott, for which I uh, fully accept that she's not present and I send my uh, best wishes. One, all building should meet the existing safety standards. Two, we do not hold records of voltage surges or numbers of extra electrical safety checks. Three, the building safety regular 
regulator, building safety regulator, will be undertaking a cost-benefit analysis of making regular inspections and testing of electrical installations in relevant buildings. Now, somebody must hold the electrical testing certificates for these properties. I don't expect the government to hold them, but somebody does. My question is, in the circumstances, as the government asked who holds the certificates. The beauty of, or well, the tragedy of Grenfell is because of the website of the inquiry, all the certificates are publicly there. We can see them. We can't see them for the other blocks. Somebody's paying for the testing. The certificates are being issued and logged. Where are they and has anybody checked? Are they being done to the same incompetent level as they clearly were being done at Grenfell from the figures I've showed? But the answers I had, the last few answers, the term will be is worrying, but cost-benefit analysis beggars belief in the circumstances. <clears throat> Health and safety executive as the regulator clearly does not want to know from inquiries that engineers and journalists have made. Many organisations refuse to respond to repeated requests from Conor McGlone on behalf of the Engineering and Technology magazine. In 2022, the IET published a standardised way of testing for NCDs in Guidance Note 3, so there's no excuse whatsoever. We should all be, I think, very concerned. I therefore ask the Minister to ask within government why people not only remain at risk due to the cladding, which of course the previous debates have shown, but why the inadequate electrical safety checking procedures cannot be upgraded to the better qualified gas testing system. And we need to do it on the basis of some evidence we've got now from the inquiry website. I'd be amazed if someone in the department hadn't actually asked about this or read the certificate. Somebody must have done that. They're there and they're publicly available. And I would say this, it'll be too late after another event. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.